partner in crime here, Joel Lee. He is there right he is. there. There Speaking he is. The it's it's like you asked for him and it's like and I so wish, he, yeah. You manifested it, Joe. <laughs> That's right. So we are going to go ahead and get started with today's um, weekly Loan Desk Room. Um, we've got Joe here and Joel from the Loan Desk team. And so um, we're going to be doing our weekly, um, or rather monthly, I should say, uh, Mortgage Market Trends and Updates Room. So um, I'm going to let Joe go ahead and take over. And so I see a lot of familiar familiar faces in the room. And so we'll we'll go ahead and get started. Right on. Okay. Um, well, first, I mean, it looks like we got Scott Brandon on the call. So just to update you, I did talk with D this morning. Uh, he is pushing as hard as he can to get the DRE to review his application. And then once uh, it is approved, then Loan Desk uh, should go live. So um, D seems hopeful, which makes me hopeful, but I know everyone is chomping at the bit. And trust me, like no one's more frustrated than I am because there's been a lot of work to to um try to take advantage of this opportunity and um it, but when it'll happen it'll be done and it, and uh it'll just uh at this time it, um i don't have an update other than d is calling every day and he is expected to receive a call back from like the, the head regulator today so once i have any further information i will certainly be in touch uh, i wanted to go over two things uh, today uh the first one i'm going to spend quite a bit of time on and uh, so here's kind of the agenda that I have is uh, one loan desk licensing update, two area median income, and three just what's going on with with mortgage rates. Um, feel free to jump in. This is totally informal. Uh, so if you have specific questions off the agenda, don't hesitate to, to chime in. Um, but I wanted to go over area median income. So. There's two updates that we get annually from the FHFA, the Federal Housing Financing Agency. They are the ones who govern Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. So the FHFA are, is basically in charge of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, as you probably already know, are government-sponsored enterprises. Um, they really create the market for mortgages. So people ask me all the time, how are you able to get me a lower interest rate than what I can get at Chase, you know, the largest bank in the, in the country? And the reality is we're all kind of just brokers to the government on many, many loans. So if it's, a, if it's a VA and FHA loan, I mean, we're just all brokering those loans to the, the federal government. Just So Chase is a broker essentially too in that case. And so if we're able to be more operationally efficient, have better tech, um, take advantage of lender competitive dynamics. That's how we can beat the biggest bank in the world on an interest rate. So, and then on conventional loans, so conventional is lumped into basically many, many categories. You could do like a totally alternative underwritten loan, and that's a conventional loan, but conventional within conventional, there are conforming loans, loans that conform to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. If it conforms, banks often uh, will sell that loan because for that's their best business model. So for example, the nationwide conforming loan limit is $766,575, like but basically $766K is the nationwide conforming loan limit. Now I know many of you are in California. So just let's say if you're in Alabama, every, every home that's at 7766, uh, assuming all the other factors are met, could potentially conform to Fannie Mae. Once it's 767000 Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac will no longer buy that home. So now we're no longer looking for, um, we're no longer brokering to the government. We're essentially uh, doing a privatized lending. And that is where having a low cost of capital, if you're Chase, if you're Wells Fargo, could be a competitive advantage. They may not, you know, active you know be active on it in fact actually i have a client who's um getting a lower rate um on a 30-year fixed mortgage through rocket mortgage on a jumbo loan than they are getting from chase so but chase in theory could potentially offer a, a better deal on on those jumbo loans because it's we're no we're not brokers it's it's private money at stake 
So uh, I preface that because uh, I am asked often, how can you how can you get a, a lower rate than a bank? Like it's just it's a cognitive disconnect for many smart people. They're like, you know, a bank would offer the, the, the lowest rate. And the reality is we're all brokers. We're all brokers to the government on most of the transactions that are originated in, in the United States. The government has its thumb on the scales of the mortgage market. There's two announcements that are made annually by the FHFA, the governing body of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. In, in late November, December, they announced the conforming loan limits. That's like a it's like a holiday for for me. I, I love it because I, obviously I want the loan limits to be as high as possible because, so I can get more and more borrowers into the conforming loan bucket, and that's going to serve me well of where I can um, you know provide more uh, of a competitive advantage. That's the that's number one. So that so in December we get the conforming loan limits for um, 2025. And lately they've been going up because basically with the data that they that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac look at is they uh, look at like home prices. So as home prices rise, they're gonna increase um, conforming loan limits. So now we're at 766 and then in high um, cost areas like the Bay Area, um, San Francisco Bay Area, it's 1,149,000. The second uh, update that gets done is with the area median income. And I feel like this one gets a little bit less um, um, attention, but I wanted to bring it to your attention because I think it's quite important for first time home buyers. So I'm gonna share my screen here and just kind of walk through. Uh, so this is the article here, so let's, Let's open this. So if you want, you could you know, even keep track of news. So this you can see on May 9th, 2024, Freddie Mac, and let me share this tab instead. So their updated uh, area median income were released. And so some areas actually had a decrease. Some areas had a significant increase. And I really think whenever there's changes it creates opportunities for us as real estate professionals. So I, I personally like chaos and change because if you can kind of stay in front of it, you'll see little niche opportunities. So um, let's bring up the, um, let's see, let's just see if we can bring up the area median income spreadsheet by, and you're welcome to, to download these yourself. Okay, so it looks like it it opened up in a in a new screen. So let me just stop sharing for a moment so I can share a different screen. All right, so you should be seeing a spreadsheet here, and so you can see on the it's tab by uh, state. So for example, you can see Texas. So Anderson County, Texas. The 2024 area median income is is now 75,000. Okay, we have 80%. This 80% is super important. This 80% number uh, because it impacts the uh, home possible programs. Like these are like down uh, down uh, low down payment programs with that um, have uh, so I mean some are like one percent down. Uh, uh, and but as there's just other home possible also you should look at the affordable products so like home possible you can get reduced mortgage insurance reduced interest rates a credit towards your appraisal uh will borio is uh, our account executive at rocket mortgage is very knowledgeable about affordable products i encourage you to to call them and and to go through any affordable products so you can see here the change is eighteen hundred dollars um so it, there's some that where there's kind of big changes like look this is twelve thousand $50. So this is Blanco County, Texas. Now 80% is $80,960. So here's kind of where my, my mind goes is um, like, think about the professions where it's like a really, you know, like it's a salary based profession that maybe we're earning. So that if the previous one was, if the previous change on this was if the 2023, um, 
was 88 and now it's 101. Maybe it's like firefighters, police officers um, that are maybe potentially now eligible because they're earning less than this 80% AMI in Blanco, Texas. Um, so that in this, a and I have a, a file right now in Texas. The, the client earned one thousand dollars more than than the eighty percent of the AMI. So he did not qualify for the um, um, the home possible one percent down program, which is what he wanted to to go for because he earned too much. And there's just nothing that, that I could do to change it. I couldn't change the AMI. And I'm like, gosh, we're so close. And it was just SOL. Um, he, that's what he earns. It's his salary. It's shown on his pay stubs. And uh, that's what the AMI limit is. Well, now with this change, the AMI limit, I think in his county, it went up by like 1800 bucks. So now he's just under. And so I, initially we had to flip that loan into FHA. Now we're flipping it back into a home possible program. So that's a real world example of like how this uh, can, can impact, you know, a borrower qualifying. So all of a sudden he went from having to do a three and a half percent down FHA to now he can go 1% down, 2% grant um, on the um, home possible program because he's under that, um, that 80% AMI. So take a look at the counties. I, I see a lot of folks are in California, so let's, let's go into California. California is like in the high cost areas, it's it's quite high. Um, so there's a lot of folks who are at 80% or lower and they can now buy their home with 1% down, or sorry, with 3% down. That 1% down program has a cap of 350,000. So that's why it doesn't really work in most counties in California. Uh, but you can buy with 3% down, get reduced interest rates, reduced mortgage insurance. So in Alameda County, that's 133,000 um, um, now is is where the 80% AMI is. Uh, we can see where, where there's maybe some outliers. So this is kind of what I would do. I would look at the county that I'm in. So San Luis, is, is San Luis Obispo, quite an outlier, 12,500. So now it's 100K is at the 80% AMI. Um, so it looks like that's the biggest outlier. Santa Barbara too, which is right next to Slow. Um, and then somewhat the opposite direction, Yolo County. Now it's San Luis County, it's now less. So any questions about the AMI? And, and actually, I also wanted to show you how I will often look up the AMI. I don't use, this is super easy. Um, both Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have portals that you can go and look, just put the address in. So I'm going to put in Fannie Mae AMI lookup and I'll share the screen momentarily. trying to accept cookies and it's been quite slow. So you can see that the 2024 area median income were updated over the weekend of, of May 17th. So this is a great post opportunities. I always think like, okay, when there's changes, it's a good opportunity to, you know, if you send a newsletter, if you do social posting, like this is very recent, just, um, you know, 10 days ago. Ah, I don't know why it's. Okay, I get it. All right. So I can put in a, an address or an area or a zip code. So 
So I'll just put in maybe Austin, Texas. Let's see what happens. And so you can see here the conforming loan limits and you can see the AMI and you can see now for 2024, 80% is $100,800. You're at the home ready income limit. Oh yeah, um, here, let me put this. So if you, if you just, Google, you know, I'll put the link in the chat, but if you Google search the, uh, this AMI lookup tool, Copy link address and into the chat. So I didn't really get into like the home ready home possible product because you know if uh, you have access to Will, I encourage you to call him. But essentially, you can buy with uh, three percent down, and uh, or if maybe you can even qualify for that one percent down program. And get reduced mortgage insurance and reduced interest rates. So great first time home buyer program. And you know, that's positive news that more applicants will be, be able to qualify for it with the AMI being increased in, in many counties. Um, did want to just kind of quickly over, go over rates. So I, before I do that, does any questions on AMI? Again, it can be totally informal. I'm happy to, if anyone wants to take the mic and share their experience, happy to let go of it. All right, so moving on from that area median income uh, update, uh, I did want to just kind of go over uh, where we're at and as far as um, interest rates go. So right now we're kind of getting mixed si signals. So last uh, week we saw rates come down uh, because the consumer price index was um, lower than anticipated. Today, um, we the um, Fed president in Minnesota said it's amazing like how much power they have so uh wanted to see more months of positive inflation data before rate cut this was said um on uh, cnbc boom bond market reacted and then um now we saw interest rates go up this morning so um as i mentioned uh, and many times before like where i keep really keep track of rates is i will go i will track the 10-year treasury yield to me it's the best indicator for um, what is going to happen with with interest rates. So as the treasury yield goes up, the mortgage interest rates will go down. And so you can see here, just this is a today's range, it's up. So today's interest, and that's a 1.68% is actually a pretty big increase. It usually usually doesn't change that, you know, that much. You can see on the five day, so we had that that drop um and so then we saw interest rates kind of fall uh this in, on the 22nd and then now interest rates have kind of risen so um at the end of the day like whenever i talk to clients about locking in their rate this is always a conversation i have i say hey if you're happy with the with the in-hand offer you know to just go ahead and and lock in because um you know you it protects your downside in general, my experience of working with borrowers is that they're more frustrated than they are when things get worse than they are happier when things get better. It's just, um, but the reality is, like, I, and and you know, since Loan Desk is a broker, you know, as long as we have enough time, we could potentially flip the lender. So let's say you lock a loan with Rocket Mortgage, and there's like a major shift in the bond markets. Like, you know, let's say this goes down 10. percent That would be a pretty major major shift if if all of a sudden bond yields are now at you know 4% instead of 4.5%. So rates would then fall quite a bit. You know, rates would probably fall about you know half a percent themselves. Well, we could always then just take that application to a different mortgage lender. That's one of the the powers of being a broker um, is that you know if there is some crazy shift in the market, you know, assuming we have enough time to close the loan. Or if not, you know, they can choose a, an interest rate where they get a lender credit to cover the closing costs. And then after they make six on-time payments, then they can refinance their mortgage in, into a lower rate. So you can see here, 52-week range, you know, we're not quite at the high. That I think that high um, was in like November. Yeah, so late October, 
November was the high. We we uh, we almost hit five percent and uh, on the Treasury yield, and then you can see it kind of came down. We did have this opportunity, and then now it's been rising at least just in the last five days. So that is all I have for today's agenda. Is are there any questions? Comments? Is there anything that anyone has seen while um, on social media or doing your own research that you'd like to talk about um, while we have the Loan Desk team here? This might be a good opportunity just to um, discuss any current events that you might have questions on. No? All right. Um, well, then, why don't we wrap up today's um, mortgage market trends and updates room? Um, I want to thank uh, Joe um, and Joel and the entire Loan Desk team for joining us today. And then I want to thank everyone that joined us for the call. Um, I appreciate you guys um, making the time out of your day. This is important information, and you want to make sure that you um, are accurately informed. And so, Thank you to everyone um, that showed up and uh, I hope everyone has a great rest of their Tuesday. Thanks, Hilo. Just one parting note, if someone is creating content around the area median income and they want me to like review a newsletter or something like that, I'm happy to, to, to get involved or to, to take a look at your content before you post it. <laughs>